Hey guys, it's Chris. Thanks for watching another episode of Behind the Words video series, which is basically a small video that comes out every month that takes you as the reader and the listener of the Blade Children's story to a whole new level. So it's kind of a hodgepodge of videos, and we talk about a few selected things in the story and three things to accomplish this. One, we just want to let you guys know why I wrote what I wrote in the story. Uh, number two, what God's Word says about what I wrote in the story. And the third thing is how you can apply that lesson to your daily life. So as always, if you have not purchased the Blade Children book, you can do so right now in hardcover, paperback, or ebook version at westbopress.com. And if you like to listen to audiobooks, rather you're in the car or you're just at home, um, there is a five hour audiobook that I created. You can get that at cdbaby.com. So make sure you swing by some of those websites, check them out. The official website is uh, bladechildren.com. And if you're on Facebook, uh, find us there and become a fan. Help us share it by liking it um, and telling all your friends about it. We'd really appreciate that. And stay tuned on that Facebook page because we do have some giveaways as well. So anyway, I wanted to take this opportunity to kind of wrap up us talking about the main villains of the Blade Children story. It's called They're called the Four Dark Angels of Heaven. And what we've already kind of covered is fear, greed, and lust. And today, I wanted to talk with you guys about the fourth and probably the most uh, powerful Dark Angel of Heaven, and her name is Envy, and she looks like this. Now, Envy is a little bit different than the other Dark Angels. Uh, she's a little bit more, I guess, attractive looking than the others, uh, but Envy's a little bit different in this. Unlike the other Dark Angels, who used to be Angels of Light, but became corrupt during the Great Rebellion, uh, Envy actually comes into existence by a twisted form or a carbon copy of Hope. And Hope, as you will find out in the story, is actually the name of one of the guardian angels in our story. So um, Envy's power actually comes from manipulating and copying the powers from the guardian angels, if that makes any sense. So Envy's theme in life pretty much is that if she sees someone else um, having something or doing something, it's her motto and her mission in life is to have exactly what they have, only better, and do exactly what they do, only better. And so the reason why I kind of put that in this character is because so often than not, we struggle with fear, greed, lust, and envy in our own ways. We will look at someone who might have something that we wish we would have had, and we become envious of what they have. And we're determined that one day we're going to have something just like it or something better. Same thing with something that they might be able to do, like a talent. We could be determined to have something like that even better. And I wanted to kind of read the definition from Webster's Dictionary on what envy really means. And this is what Webster's defines envy as. It's a feeling of discontent or resent. It's a longing aroused by someone else's possessions or qualities. Did you know that uh, another word to describe envy is jealousy? And the Bible has quite a lot to say about the power of envy or jealousy. Check this out. In Proverbs chapter 27, verse 4, the Bible says that wrath is cruel, that's true, and anger is overwhelming. But who can stand before jealousy? And then here's another one that kind of shows you the power that envy and jealousy has even over us as human beings. It's in Proverbs 14, verse 30, and it says that envy makes the bones rot. Man, that is pretty strong stuff right there. Last scripture I want to share with you about envy or jealousy. It's in James chapter 3, verse 16. And it says, For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every vile practice. Man. If you actually read James chapter 3 and a few verses before verse 16, it actually describes envy and jealousy as a demonic force. So that's pretty intense. Just to kind of give you a perspective of even what the Bible describes as envy and jealousy and how it portrays to being in our own lives, it rots our own bones. It is something that's strong. It's like who can stand up against it? And when we have envy and jealousy, there is disorder, there's discontent in every vile practice. And when you think about it, 
it's more it's true I mean the Bible is true when we focus on that so when we become jealous of what others have we become bitter and we become unsatisfied with what we do have here's an example maybe in your own life you've seen someone who has something that you wish you had rather it's a possession rather it's their clothing uh, rather it's their own personality or their talents and you you really wish you had what they had well, the first thing that goes to happen is that we start thinking about ourselves more than we think about others. And we start thinking, man, if only I had what they had, you know what? I would do this better or I would show this off in a better way. And we become unsatisfied with what we do have. And we start comparing ourselves to others, thinking that, man, if only I had what they had, or man, if only I looked the way they looked, I would be cool. And we tend to forget one of the most important things is that each and every one of us are uniquely created by God. We were made in His image, and the Bible says that we are each fearfully and wonderfully made. There's no one else that looks exactly like you, talks exactly like you, does exactly what you do on this earth. Even if you have a twin sibling, you guys are still completely different people that God fearfully and wonderfully made. And here's the cool thing. Today, I just really wanted to encourage you guys that let's take our focus off of ourselves, of being jealous or envious of what other people may have, and let's put it onto other people and their needs. Because here's the cool thing about how to defeat envy and how to defeat jealousy. It's that moment when you take your focus off of yourself and you put it on someone else and their needs, that's the moment when envy and jealousy is destroyed. And I just want you guys to take a moment today and thank God for everything you do have. Um, everything you do have, rather that's physical things like clothing or, or a house to live in, uh, to stuff that you need like nourishment and food and water or even your talents even. Take some time today and actually start thanking God for those because as you start thanking God for what you do have, my prayer is that He will bring um, to your mind the knowledge that there are people in this world that might not have what you have. There are people in this world who don't have a home to live. Uh, they struggle every single day just to have food and water. Uh, so I just pray that as you start thanking God for what you do have, He'll start revealing to you people around the world that might not have what you have, therefore giving you more of a heart and a mind of compassion instead of envy and jealousy. So again, I just want to encourage you, take some time to thank God for what you do have. Pray for those who don't have as much as what you have. Take your focus off of yourself. Put it on others because that's when envy and jealousy is destroyed. We'll talk to you next month. Bye-bye.